good morning, everybody. Those of you who are out there and can hear us and see us, uh, you're very welcome to uh, Bow Street Summer Series of Workshops and Webinars, supported by Screen Skills Ireland. We're thrilled that this morning we have possibly the busiest casting director in the country uh, with us, Louise Kiley, as you can see from that uh, brief show we would put together there. Uh, and we're going to talk about all things casting uh, and demystifying the process. Um, we're also going to be taking questions from you guys, so you should be able to see as part of the webinar um, the uh, tech platform here. There's a Q&A box. So if anyone has questions they want to send in, you can just uh, type them into the Q&A section there, and we'll be monitoring them and going through them uh, over the course of this morning. And we'll get to put some of your questions to Louise. Uh, Louise, how are you? Thank you for joining us. I'm really well, thank you for having me. Um, I want to watch that again. And I'm like, that's so impressive. I'm like, oh, look at that really nice video you made. Thank you very much. Yeah, did we really do all of them? It was kind of a surprise. <laughs> yeah, it's really cool. Um, yeah. Excellent. Um, well, look, let's just jump in because I know we've got, um, we're, we've got lots to get through. Um, I want to start kind of like basically just at the beginning, the idea of, um, you know, you don't really get many people in, in school who are meet the career guidance counsellor and, and hoping to get enough points to become a casting director as such. It seems to be like no one sets out in school to be that. And you even took an even more curious route, I think, by doing law first. Mm -hmm. So what yeah. was the journey for you that you ended up in that role as a casting director? Yeah, that's a really good question. And it's a really good point about the CAO form or, you know, wanting to be a casting director. It is one of those industries that it's just a bit of an anomaly like how do you find your way in and it's a brilliant job so um so i was in school plays and um auditioned for uh trinity when i was like 18 or 19 and didn't even get a recall so i was offered law in ucc and i went and did that and was part of the dramatic society committee all that stuff so i was in the theater in university a lot but law was my degree and then I auditioned for the Gaiety, which I was lucky to be accepted into. So I did that for two years. And then I was part of Castaway Actors Agency. So uh, a cooperative agency for actors who are not sure what that is. Basically, the community of actors represents themselves and others within the agency. And that sort of taught me the kind of businessy side of things. And, um, and I mean, Shimmy, you know me at this stage, like I'm... I like the organization, do you know what I mean? And I like that part of it and I like the contracts and, and the monies and all that stuff. So, um, so yeah, so one day myself and my friend just decided randomly when we were in the office that we'd be casting directors. And um, we boldly made an announcement at night time um, on a borrowed laptop or borrowed computer, it was a laptop. And uh, I think there was a bit of, oh my goodness, the next day when people saw our emails. <laughs> and, uh, and so we kind of squatted in an internet cafe for about three or four days until we cast our first short film, which Liz Gill was uh, directing. And we, I think I've said this before, but we used ReRaw Nightclub as our, as our studio and hired lights and stuff and sort of just winged it really. Um, and that was the beginning. Yeah, so that was 2005. And do you, was, the, was the idea that if anyone understands actors, we do, and that we would be better suited to really understand both sides of the, you know, the process from having gone into audition as well as the other side? Yeah. I mean, I don't think you have to be an actor to be a casting director, for sure. Um, uh, there are elements of recruitment in it. There's elements of law in it. But at the core of it, if you do have this sort of imagination or the kind of the, the grow towards drama, theater, acting, you know, film, television, whichever it is, if you have that kind of interest in the world, I think it makes a massive difference. And yes, the fact that I have sat on that other side of the table, that I did sit on the other side of the table and was horrified with nerves. Um, yeah, I totally understand that, yeah. We'll be getting to that for sure. I know. It's <laughs> yeah. probably like, what do you do for the nerves? It's a big yeah. question, I know. So how would you actually, um, how would you define your role or describe, you know, what it is when, when you meet people who aren't in the business and they say, well, casting director, you mm -hmm. know, people have a very glamorous image of that. How would you describe what it is? I mean, obviously this is the business side, but how would you just, how would you describe your, your function, your role? Okay, so the basics so exactly so if i meet somebody who's not in the business at all 
what do you do for a living? In like in a taxi, what do you do for a living? I get actors for film and television. So that's what we do. We are the people who find the actors for the projects. So um, kind of scratching the surface on that a little bit, of course, is we're hired by the production company. We, um, we're hired by the producer and the director team um, to, on behalf of the production, go and source the correct humans to embody the characters which are on the page. Um, and that process in a sort of overriding fashion is the same on every job. But then of course, again, once you kind of peel away the onion layer, each job is very, very different. But at the absolute basic job is, we are the people who find the humans mm -hmm. to, to embody the characters. And if you want animals, there's someone else who goes and does that. Yeah, and then like exactly. Those. And we don't cast extras. Sometimes we might assist the second AD or the extras department, depending on the project, um, to cast the special artists. But we don't do that. Okay. I mean, obviously, the job, I'd say, has evolved over the years as well. And we'll probably talk about yeah. the, the role technology has played in, in changing that. And, uh, and the effect of maybe uh, smaller budgets sometimes, you know, mm. A squeeze the amount of days that you guys are available but is it also um maybe it's worth mentioning as well this presumption that um that all cast and directors choose the actors you know that it's like yeah. if they don't get the part it's your fault that they don't get yeah the no god that's funny that's something that i suppose i would have thought years ago starting out um no it's it's an absolute collaboration we're there to know who's around. We're there to find who's around. And um, it's in my best interests to work harder, to find more people, because therefore it makes my job easier because I have more choice, but it also makes my job more interesting because equally I have more choice. There's more to be done, but at the end of the day, hopefully there's a more sort of exciting and creative result thereby. So, my job is to know who is there, as in I also need to know who I watch on television. So when I do watch a movie or when I do watch a TV series, I need to sort of bank those names and, and know who those actors are and who represents them and all that stuff. Um, and then, of course, our job is to audition actors and then collaboratively with the director, as you know, and the producers, we make decisions around who is best for that ensemble piece or for that, you know, at that time. Um, I have an opinion, which I believe as a HOD is regarded highly because otherwise they wouldn't hire me. Do you know what I mean? So yes, there is a, there is a, you know, I, I have a say, but that's what it is. It's like, you know, we are together in this and at the end of the day, creatively, it is the director and the producer's project and they are the people who, have to make the final call and then of course if it's a studio production that um goes to the studio for approval as well yeah we'll get into the the different mm -hmm. stages of that as well there were people you know people sometimes underestimate that sometimes the it's the the funders who have a big say or the producer has a big say mm, and actually, I mean, well, or broadcaster as well you know yeah i mean they uh, they do like as in uh, you know generally if they're sort of supporting the project they trust the creative team who are who are making it, but there is an approval process, and you know generally it's you just kind of go and say you know this is who we think, and they say wonderful, great, you know. Um, if for for me working uh, for the commissioning editors in the likes of RTE or Virgin, um, luckily I know them at this stage, and luckily they know me at this stage, and um, and trust that you know we'll do good work. So you say if, you, if the role is to go and find the actors to present, where do you find them? <sighs> well, it depends. I mean, like this, there's probably, there's, you know, 130 actors listening. And of course we go to the agents and of course we go to the drama schools and of course we go to the film academy. And of course we go to all the traditional resources. So um, if an actor, is connected in any way to any of those places, we will know you at that stage. Um, also, 
we have a very large bank of actors who, have, who don't have representation. So it's really key for the actors to know and for me to communicate the fact that if you don't have representation, contact us and, and we will find you or we will, you know, um, it is really important for me, for actors to understand that it's in my best interests to look farther and look harder, you know? Now that's the sort of, again, the kind of, the broad strokes. So of course you go to the agents and the drama schools and, you know, the people who you know and, and whether that's in agents in England or Ireland or the US or wherever. Then, of course, depending on the specificity of the requirements of the project, then you find yourself in other arenas. So, for example, um, there are a number of projects shooting over the West of Ireland at the moment. And, you know, when it comes to some of the roles, um, if an actor has a base in the West of Ireland, then that's to the benefit of us. And so we'll do a search over there. Or we might be looking for something who is you know, somebody who's like an amazing skateboarder or somebody who is a brilliant gymnast, you know, and that sort of script requirement, those things come up all the time. So, so, so then we go to social media generally. Well, that was the big thing I wanted to ask you about social media. And, uh, yeah. and I know most of you, we try and, you know, remind students the, 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 uh, the, the professional standard of having a public profile and a private profile and, and what happens when you go on someone's Facebook page and there's, I mean, everyone's entitled to a private life and we all like a drink from time to time, but you know, but you do, you do go through social media to try looking for people. Mm. Um, but we have, I mean, we have a sort of a process. So we have a Louise Kylie Cassidy Facebook page. Okay. I have my own Instagram, but you know, people are respectful enough and the very infrequent time I'd kind of go, you know, if there's a private DM or whatever it's called and they, they say, can you see me for this project? Yeah. My response generally is just send me an email because yeah. of course my work goes through email. Um, but the little kind of posts that we put out are really useful and are like very fruitful in their return. Yeah. It's great. Uh, and like you said, it's, it's very job specific as well. And we'll talk about that later when we talk about what Richard did as well. Uh, mm -hmm. but every job kind of brings its own challenges uh, as such. So in terms of the actual the process, let's assume, and I know we'll talk about self-taping as well, because sometimes mm -hmm. people have to self-tape before they even get into the room. Uh, in terms of the actual, if someone has been called into a, to audition, I want to talk a little bit maybe about the casting etiquette. Um, because um, I know, for example, like for, um, in America, it's like, don't touch my hand. <laughs> so, no, it's like the, the idea of shaking hand, we want to make our best impression, we want to be friendly. But yeah. I know for a lot of casting directors in America, it's like, I don't want to shake a hundred hands all day, I don't know what I'll catch. Um, mm -hmm. So is there, is there an etiquette, is there how mindful should people be or should they just like be, them, be themselves as much as possible? Yeah, I think it's probably both, which isn't a very useful answer, but um, it depends on the person. So, you know, obviously in this COVID world, like nobody's shaking hands with each other, but, but sort of rewind three or two years or four years time, like before, yeah. we've always had hand sanitizer in the, in the studio. Um, in, within the team, some people are more kind of allergic to that stuff than others. And for various reasons, they have small children or they, you know, they just are that person. Uh, I've never been hugely bothered by it. Um, I will say nowadays, obviously, we're not going to do that. My feeling is that you're, you're sort of, you know, at the, the end of your question, which was, should they just kind of be themselves? I think that's probably the best way to kind of, you know, uh, we're all just kind of regular humans in this process together. So let's just make it as kind of natural and as normal as possible. That said, if you are sick, and this is not apropos of COVID, yeah. but the amount of people that have come into me and gone, oh, I just, I just throwing up all day, but I'm here now, thank God. And just go, really? Just, I mean, and I'm not the germophobic one on the team. You can just imagine people are like cleansing the room as they leave, it's so gross. Or like, don't bring your kids in if they're sick. It's just bad behavior. Do you know what I mean? If you are sick, Put yourself on tape tomorrow the next day i would far rather that than you come anywhere near me at that point 
Yeah, I mean, it's like the fear of, oh, I'll never get another chance again or whatever, I better drive. Yeah. yeah, no, of course. I mean, firstly, I won't remember unless it's you're the sick person because then it's just gross. Do you know what I mean? Um, but I won't, I'll never forget, I'll never remember that stuff. So, so if I say to you self-tape, that's absolutely fine. Okay. In terms of costume now, because I, I remember someone auditioned for me once playing a, a bank robber, a gangster, and they came in in a balaclava, didn't want to take it off. Mm -hmm. um, so it's about finding the balance, I guess. Uh, yeah. How far do they have to go with costume? Um, that's a really good question. It's, I think costume is important. Mm -hmm. um, I think, I, I mean, I would say more clothes are important rather than costume. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So for example, if you are going for somebody who, you know, commercial wise would be in a suit, then put something together that's a bit suit-like. You know, if the person would wear a tracksuit, get your hands on a tracksuit, put your hair in that certain way. You know, um, now a balaclava or a gun, we've had a gun a few times. Like that's a bit sinister and a bit unnerving and I wouldn't agree with that. Now, if it's a case that they've got a kind of balaclava in their handbag and they go, I've got this, isn't this gas? I'll be using it for the first line and then I'll take it off. And then you kind of go, okay, that's fine. But you just have to, like, at no point does one need to feel unnerved at all, you know? The gun is weird. Like, you know, I mean, obviously a toy gun is one thing, but something that looks real is like, it's not comfortable. So um, I would say for the ladies, you know, if we are in Victorian Dublin in the late 1800s, sort of some form of a dress or a skirt, a pair of heels, something which sort of makes you stand in a certain way, feel a certain way, look a certain way, sit a certain way, it's absolutely going to benefit you. Yeah. Um, also knowing that like everybody else will, do you know what I mean? And the people who do make that extra effort um, put themselves at an advantage sort of physically. Um, and, and equally for the guys, I would say there's often a kind of, you know, for example, when we were doing a TV series, I think in the book it said, you know, she's wearing a paradox and like a flowery dress and they were all in it and like good for them. Do you know what I mean? It's easily sourced. I'm not talking about coming in dressed as the Lion King, you know what I mean? But like, uh, but I think it's important to make that yeah. effort. Yeah. Um. How are you with uh, people holding the, their sides in their hands, like almost like for, as a safety net of some kind? But. Uh, I mean, ideally we don't hold our sides. Yeah. I'd say sometimes, you know, people will have them in front of them, of course, or sometimes on their lap. But, you know, I think use of the hands, the freedom of the hands uh, is probably preferable. Do you know, but see them, you know, have them wherever you need to see them. But this is a bit hands, hands, sides and handsy. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You don't feel free in the moment to express yourself or do something spontaneous. So. Yeah. And, and you know, there, like, there are so few people who don't learn their lines, as in most people, like people learn their lines now. So there sort of isn't a requirement to have them unless, as you say, for safety, in which case there's another way that we can do that. Yeah. I think it's something you talk a lot about in here is that the, the tragedy is the audition becomes the fear of forgetting the lines when actually it's really not about the lines really, is no. it? Yeah. I mean, you need to know the lines yeah. as in like the, the writer has spent however many years putting those words on a page in a rhythm in which they would like them said, right? Yes. But this audition is not a test of lines and I don't care if you get your lines wrong. I do care if you make up other lines. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But if you replace a word with, or if you, you know, sometimes if you're trying to learn a line and it just won't go in, the writer will often kind of go, oh, actually, maybe that just needs to be slightly tweaked. Like that just means the man walked across the road, the man crossed the road. Do you know what I mean? Like it's such a tiny thing. Um, we appreciate that you know you might be at home reading with yourself or reading with your partner or reading with your mother and then you come in and you're faced with one of my team it won't be me 
unless it's like absolute emergency, um, uh, then you um, then you're thrown a bit. Do you know what I mean? And that can happen. So I just think learn them as like as much they're in, they're in. Get them in there, and you know, try to stick to them as much as possible. But nerves are nerves, and like don't worry about it. So what do we do about the nerves? This is the million dollar question. Yeah, so the nerves are the preparation will like and I, I've said this before and I like I, I don't mean to sort of undermine the nerves, but I actually genuinely feel very, very strongly like talking from personal experience that I would feel nerves like I would go for an interview for a job and feel like a little bit nervy outside. But I am so prepared for that interview that as soon as I get in there, the nerves will go because the work has been done. If you feel like you're winging it, and as you say, if you feel like you're reaching for the lines, then of course your brain is gonna like start talking to you in your head, and then there's nothing worse because you can't be present, you know? Um, I would say, obviously you prepare what's on the page, you read the script if you can, you, I mean, you read the book if you can, do you know what I mean, of course. Um, but you kind of have to go beyond that. Like, you know, if you're meeting me and we've met before, like there's a kind of a human thing, which is like, you know, saw the film, went great. Like that was really fun the last time or my friend was in that movie that you did. Do you know what I mean? Just kind of personal touch. If you're meeting the director, watch their movies. Yeah. Like know who you're meeting. And so, First of all, you know the genre, which of course is vastly important. And second of all, you can say to them without blowing smoke up people's arses, like you can kind of go, well, I really, I thought that last movie was really amazing. Good for you that you, you know, won that big award or do you know what I mean? Like just, you know, I mean, we've had people sort of come in and do this with directors, you know, this thing. I was like, what are you doing? Get off the floor. Uh, but, but you can, you know, you can be a human about it and go, do you know what? I saw your movie three years ago and it really, I loved it for all of these reasons. And then suddenly they're just talking about stuff. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That's what Lenny would say. It's just, it's a conversation. It's just yeah. a normal human conversation. Yeah. yeah. That's exactly it. Yeah. And if, if it's not, we feel it and you feel it and it's a bit, and then we're all trying our hardest, you know, to, um, to sort of make it something. Whereas the people who are super prepared, it's just a chat, do you know? Get on with us, yeah. Yeah, and actually I will say, like in reference to Lenny, like he, if you meet him, he will have done probably the same amount of work to get to that place as you have. So if I put it in context, he will watch that tape he wants to know all about you, as in not all about you, about your work. Do you know what I mean? He likes to know exactly who he's meeting to do his research on them. And so there's no winging it from his side either. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, so exactly that. It's a conversation. Just be professional. It's like, uh, yeah. Yeah. It's, totally. it's also, I think also because, I mean, there used to be much fewer opportunities in this business that, you know, the auditions would come along once every five months or six months. Now there's, thank God, there seems to be a lot more happening um, that it's, it shouldn't be as uh, putting all your eggs in one basket, that pressure. If I don't get this, I may not work for another six months or a year. Yeah, exactly. And, and I mean, maybe this is just my memory of it, but sort of believing people know you haven't worked for eight months. Like thinking when you go to the lighthouse, although it wasn't around them, but the, you know, the project bar or whatever, like thinking that my peers knew that like, oh, I've been waitressing for the last six months. Like, firstly, I'm sure they don't know it. And if they do, they couldn't give a shit. Do you know what I mean? So it's not like anybody's judging in any shape or form. Um, we're all there for a mutual goal, which is to get the best we can do, do you know? That's a key word you use there, judging. If, you re -re if we kind of re rephrase it in terms of what, what you're looking for, maybe a suitability, rather than are they any good or not. Oh my God, totally. Like that's what, I, I, what I'm talking about judging there is like my perception of other people judging me. Of yeah. course not, we don't judge people. No, no, not at all. I mean, the fact is, I've said before, it's like the talent goes without saying. 
people are talented. You Otherwise, know. wouldn't be in the room. Exactly. And they, you know, and for the most part, they wouldn't even be taping at them. You know, um, people are so talented. It's crazy. Um, it's just about who fits, combinations, chemistry, um, availability, practical stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. If, we, if we can accept the theory that everyone is talented, which they mm -hmm. are, um, and that it is suitability, um, and we understand that nerves sometimes do hinder mm. what people do in the room. Are there other things that you've observed uh, that actors do that let themselves down sometimes that, you know, uh, that in your head, you're like, I know they're, be they're, they're, they're letting themselves, if only I could just, and I know you do help try and tease mm -hmm. a performance out of them of some kind of such, but are there any other common ways that you think actors sometimes let themselves down or um, is it like being too needy or trying to impress too much or too nervous or? No, do you know, the, the only thing that I would say, and I know if it's like repetition, I don't mind if somebody is needy and I certainly don't mind if somebody is nervous, like nerves, like I totally get, we can all feel it and we're with you. And actually what I would say is, um, what I learned quite early on, Jimmy, is like, weirdly, nerves don't read. Like, you don't see nerves when you watch the tapes back. The energy, you might, yeah. Yeah, you, you, I mean, you might feel it in the room or you might sort of hear a little bit in their voice or see that little shaky hand potentially. But very rarely, I very rarely see that. And I certainly don't see it when I watch it back. And a bit of nerves does not preclude you from getting a job in any shape or form. Um, winging it even a little bit is quite transparent. So. Like they haven't done their homework or. And it's so rare, but I remember a few years ago, the director said to the actor, and this person wasn't long out of drama school. So, you know, it was just about sort of having a bit of a word, but some, something like, you know, um, so what did you think of the end of the script? <laughs> And she made some sort of jolly quip about, you know, oh, I can't tell you or blah, blah, blah. And I was like, that's an odd answer. And then there was like a big sort of heavy weight in the room. And it was really obvious that she just hadn't read it. Do you know what I mean? Now she's at a recall for a big part in a movie and you go, that is not going to fly at all. Do you know, like at that point or, um, yeah, that sort of just, sort of floaty you know because I remember it as an actor like you know there's a sort of a place where you can go which is like the easiest place to go and it tends to be the place where you've kind of learned the lines and you kind of have an idea of what you're doing and and you kind of think I can do it if I do this um but of course knowing that if you get the job there's going to be far more layers underneath to kind of scratch the surface and you're going to go far far down the problem is is that nowadays in order to get the job you need to have gone down that far. So yeah. this is not enough. I mean, this is enough at the first, in the first instance, yeah. this is, you know, but when you actually dig down deep, you know, uh, you're going to get a much more interesting, um, emotionally intelligent performance, which we are much more engaged with, you know? Um, yeah, thinking about, thinking about, and listening, listening. And not something which in any way lets people down, but it's hard sometimes to hear what the director is saying when the nerves are standing in front of you. And some directors are big talkers and some directors aren't. So in both situations, if you don't hear or you can't tell what they're trying to say because they've been speaking for quite some time and it's got a bit muddled, just ask. Sometimes, like if I'm in that situation and, you know, and the, this is the sixth person of the day and the director has been sort of, telling people different parts during the day but then by the sixth person they sort of tell all of those things so that's quite a lot of information to receive before yeah. they can kind of get their first one out so sometimes it might just be a little bit of a do you understand that like do you get now where we are what's our the sort of and sometimes they'll say yes but you can kind of tell that there's the feeling that they're a bit startled at that time i generally say to directors and i could be totally wrong so feel free to make a comment in the comment box but I generally feel that like you need to get the first one out 
Do you know what I mean? They'll say hello and you'll have a very nice chat, very pleasant. But let's get that first one out so that you can then they can kind of breathe. Do you know what I mean? But it's also, I think, from a director's perspective, sometimes when you go in there, you don't even know what you want. Mm -hmm. And you are finding out more and more about the character from the different choices the actors bring in. And we'll, sometimes an actor will show you something about the character you hadn't even considered, which yeah. you find really interesting. Oh, maybe they could go this way or that way. So I think, again, it goes back to the idea of just being open and flexible, mm -hmm. maybe. Yeah. And having that conversation with the director. Yeah, definitely. And, and the ones that sort of bring that interesting thing or do show you something and it is it happens as it, like you're absolutely right it happens all the time and, and it's really exciting when that happens they in my opinion tend to be the people who sort of have dug down and deep and sort of thought about what they're doing you know um because then the surprises come out the um i mean i want to talk a little bit about callbacks as well because obviously it's uh, it's like I feel like sometimes as an actor it's kind of like if you don't hear back it's trauma you know what I mean it's like the post-mortem I'm terrible I'm brutal which you're not you're maybe not suitable and then when you do get called back it's like oh, what am I going to do this time what did I do wrong the first time that they need to see me the second time and such it's callbacks I guess it's um, it's it's kind of like it's not like repeating your leaving search it's like a chance to explore something new or a chemistry test why would you call people back Generally, it, this, in this world, as you say, because it is so busy, the callback is the place where you meet the director. Okay. Um, now, that's kind of, you know, unless there's some form of a time issue or some directors, are, you know, live in Dublin and they'll happily come in. Um, but generally, that's when the list is short and the director will meet you. And as you say, then, of course, there's chemistry reads as well. Um, but in my opinion, a callback is a really good thing. Um, chemistry reads, I'm tempted to go into normal people now, but I might just stall out for a second. Before they even get into the audition, um, taping, self-taping, which is, yeah. uh, I'm going to say, it's, you know, it's very much a new part of our industry, but it's not that new anymore now, is it? No, and it's really lucky that it's not that new because um, there's obviously hit with the fact that we can't be in a room has hindered so many businesses, but actually, you know, apart from not knowing what date we can get on set, which we kind of do now, but for the last few months, but we were certainly, we were able to do what we need to do. Like, you know, I suppose what's happened in the last recent past is that people have bought home studios <laughs> and <laughs> ring lights and fancy cameras and, you know, which I think is great. I mean, as long as you're not spending all your savings, um, you know, if you're getting to play and you're getting to sort of rehearse and, you know, and create, then good for you, you know, little voice studios in your wardrobe and stuff. Um, but, you know, we can do it from anywhere. And the rules are the same as they were four or five years ago. Um, the requirement for speed is probably a bit different. It's, yeah, because it's so busy. Like there are weeks where we are just yeah there's three projects on the go and you know the tapes are and it's and it's a and it's a finely tuned touchwood system hopefully but um but it's just busy and it has, has to happen fast i just noticed one of the questions from martin is about the worst mistake actors make in in choices within self tapes i mean let me add to that as well uh, is one of the biggest mistakes actors make in self tapes is not putting their bloody name on the file <laughs> yes, <laughs> Jesus. Um, I mean, you might know who you are, but if your name is xvtco.mpeg, first of all, I don't know who that is unless I do know. And second of all, I just slightly roll my eyes because it's hard work. Um, yeah, we do ask that things are labeled in a very specific way and there's a reason for it. And believe me, it will only help <laughs> everyone. Well, basically, you know, like on a Mac or whatever computer you it's labeled there's a project there's a character there's a height there's you know a character like and that's all we need and basically if i press download that will come into my downloads i can drag it over and then i can upload it to our private system it's just much easier but that is absolutely a, just a bit of a pain in the ass you know and i know that it can't always happen but as regards kind of creative choices yeah it's I tricky think, yeah i mean i think it's a bit of a myth that there is a wrong choice to be honest i think a lot of the time, 
if you've done the work and you have a strong instinct, then your instinct is what it should be, you know? Um, and also if it's, if it's vastly wrong and we like you for it, we'll just send you another tape. Do you know what I mean? We'll, we'll, we'll get you to tape again, but, um, but I think actors worry that they're making the wrong decision more than they have to, because we have a very, very large success rate with sort of self tapes versus studios uh, sessions. So I have no concerns about it. And I wouldn't be doing it if it wasn't working. When you say success rate, do you mean you've cast from self tapes? Or? Tons, tons and tons. Sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think the standard is improving for sure. I mean, there's a lot of great information out there as well on the interweb, you know? Yeah. Uh, for workshops and that, uh, for sure. Yeah. I mean, the, you know, the sort of stuff that we used to say back in the day around plain backgrounds and landscape versus portrait and, you know, that basic stuff, that still exists. Yeah. you know good light nice light natural light here i am surrounded by cushions <laughs> um but uh you know all that good stuff good reader good eyeline you know people seem to take that for granted now because they're just really good at it so i will say the odd portrait that i get it just bothers me because it just looks a bit rubbish um sometimes what i'll do then in my infinite um <laughs> pedantry or whatever i just pop it into imovie and i'll pull it at least sideways yeah. yeah now there'll be still black lines but at least it will look better as opposed to this little squashy look on the portrait you know um yeah not big old horrible dark murky room you know in front of you and you know um and and as much as you can we have a little bit of you know that sometimes the sink is out and that doesn't work either. So, but that, it's a weird, sometimes that happens, but that's infrequent. I think they've tried just to clean the sound with audacity or something and they've yes. it separately and it just it drops out a little bit, yeah. Yeah, it does sound a bit like, because we had that recently and it looks like they kind of put a filter on it and sort of removed background sound or whatever that was and suddenly it looks like an Instagram photo. Do you know what I mean? Uh, I want to talk very quickly as well about disappointment. The the two the, the two either I mean this is uh, sadly the majority mm -hmm. uh, who aren't getting it. And and the two questions I have is for the actor who wants to know why am I not getting brought in, and for the actor who is getting brought in but isn't landing roles, why am I not landing these roles as such? Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean there's no there's no one answer fits all here as such. Yeah. Um. um. I mean, at the first part, why am I not getting seen? Now, the volume of people who we see yeah. is very vast. So I would be surprised if that was a common problem. Now, with that, you can't please everybody all the time because, of course, I hear, you know, people giving out about the fact that Louise Kylie sees way too many people so that you don't know if you've got a chance at all if you're going to get seen by her. So that's a thing that you hear quite, well, I've heard quite a lot and you kind of go, well, which one is it? Do you know what I mean? Like, you know, so I choose to give more people a shot. And so if people aren't getting seen, I think the problem, I think they should just send me an email about that because yeah, I'm, you know, it's rare, I think, I believe. Now, again, of course, you know, there are more roles for certain genders, there are more roles for certain. So, you know, there's more of a requirement across the board, um, but I don't think that there's any specific problem. And then getting cast is really hard. Yeah. You know, it's really hard. So like, I, and as you say, it is the majority. Um, that's all, I, that's all I would say. I would say you have to work very, very hard to be in with the shot to get cast and to get cast is very hard. So if you do, congratulations because of the numbers and the, and the, the competition. Yeah. It's just so much luck, isn't it? Just the right job that suits you at the right time that it's just lottery sometimes. Yeah. And also I would say... And, and this actually is not something 
which has come up very much, but should, because it's really, really important. Um, especially in the last few years with the advent of big studio productions coming into Ireland. If we have an accent on the brief, I'm telling you, like, this is, this, like, we need to work harder at our accents. No. If, if it's a North American accent, it's a general American accent, there shouldn't be anything subtle about it. It should be a very clearly defined North American accent. Um, if it's an English accent equally, if it's RP, RP is not, I've been talking quite posh for a little while and now I'm thinking I can speak RP because that's not RP. Do you know what I mean? So the look, the preparation, and then you might be coming in for what's, you know, like the green knight, the, you know, sort of soldier number three and uh, and soldier number three is saying, over here, my Lord, which is one line in a big, massive movie. But those words have to be in the correct accent and not in a sort of slightly kind of Irishy version. Um, the idea actually, of I'll get an accent coach when I land the job isn't going to yeah. cut for you, is it? No, it's not, because, because the people who are listening to it, not me, we, we generally nowadays, because it's so important, we will have somebody... Um, a, a, a person who is from America uh, who lives in Ireland helping on the day or, or reading on the day or kind of tweaking those vowels or whatever. Um, no, because they just, they hear it and they say, that's not correct. So I would say accent is a massive thing. Work on, if it says it on the brief, then work really, really hard on it. Um, yeah, it's, 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 um... What do I do when I'm not auditioning and I'm not working? You work on your accents. So you work yeah, on your exactly. stuff that you're yeah. to be doing there. Okay, yeah. there's lots of questions flying in, so I want to move on uh, just before we get to them and just talk uh, a little bit about normal people because mm -hmm. it feels like it's the, um, the TV event of the year, could be the TV event of the decade. Um, uh, there's two aspects to that. One of them is about um, the fact that, obviously, Paul announced himself immediately. And mm -hmm. Daisy uh, uh, took longer uh, to find as such. Why did it, is it just, is it just luck? Is it a case of uh, when Paul walked in, everyone just went, yeah, we found Connell. Whereas mm -hmm. with Daisy, it was a case of, you had to find the right uh, Marianne for that Connell. Or was it a case of uh, the complexity of that character, not every actor you saw had all of those different traits as such. Uh, what, yeah. what was it that, you know, you guys and Lenny were looking for that the, uh, it's not fair to say that they didn't have it because, you know, they're, I'm sure you saw great actors for that. Um, like, but you did look all over the world for, uh, for mm -hmm. Marianne. Mm -hmm. We did. Um, we looked in Ireland first and then in the UK for Connell. Um, and as you say, uh, Paul was around and just had, I mean, apart from being a really smart actor, um, and there was a bit of a buzz around him anyway, because he'd come out of the Lear and it was a really good year. And, you know, this guy, Paul Meskell, and I'd seen him in the gate and like, and then when he came in, he just did such an immensely emotionally intelligent, clever um audition and 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 exactly that thing of there was nothing that he hadn't mined from the book or the like even on the first round it was really quite overwhelming and then when he came in for the second one himself and Lenny just chatted as you say it's just a conversation talking and and really clever questions and wondering genuine wonderment about why and how and where and so the two of them getting into it together and, and then read again, it was just brilliant. And, and then, so Marianne and Connell were sort of a parallel, of, you know, because we're looking for Marianne as a parallel to Connell. And then you're absolutely right. We, we did think, well, we have our Connell now, so that has to work. But I think what stood in front of that was all of those complexities, which she has, which she, um, as a character is and is made up of. So I think as Emma was, Emma, one of the producers was saying recently about, you know, she has 
there's a there's a brittleness as we know in school and and it stems from you know hurt and being defensive and you know and and people not being very nice to her but but she has to have all and then the vulnerability and so we saw amazing actors and yes we did we saw all of the world um amazing actors and you know and then of course coupled with the fact that the irish accent has to be really great or great enough that like you know they can work with a dialect coach and it can be flawless but this is an irish story and so the person has to sound irish because that just won't work otherwise you know so um we kind of we went to ireland and then we went to england and we went to north america and went to australia and then we went back to England again, just kind of, it was a bit of sort of, I was like, well, just, uh, there's just a few, you know. And so this lady then taped with that batch of tapes. And at that point we had definitely watched a thousand ladies and, um, and it was just really exciting. Uh, and she was kind of sitting on the couch in her tape and, uh, and read it and her accent was really good. And, and so, you know, and, and when I hear an accent that that's good, <laughs> I kind of automatically assume that I'm like, well, they're obviously definitely Irish, but now to be fair, her mom's from Northern Ireland and her dad's from Scotland. So, okay. um, but she's obviously just really good at accents. So when they came in then, we did see some other actors from other parts of the world on that same day. Um, and we brought Paul in and then they read a lot of material. So there was a good deal of stuff for them to prepare. And that's the thing. Like, as you get closer, the timeline will become shorter the amount of work you have to put in will probably become more um, you are getting closer therefore your sort of feeling of it actually might happen is around that's the time to work really hard even though it might feel a little bit overwhelming and really exciting that's the time when you need to like bring it do you know what i mean because if you don't bring it at that point it won't happen and um, because like that is kind of crunch time so um so yeah so they just and then when they walked out of the room and <laughs> we all just went oh my god this is the best thing ever <laughs> so we were like ah uh, it was very exciting um so we're like yeah we'll let you know hmm. um so yeah it was cool um and obviously, given the content of the, the you know, the story as well, the, the intimacy. Um, actors who are potentially have an opportunity to perform in front of yourself and, and Lenny and, and, uh, um, and, and work in that show. But at the back of the minds are thinking, I don't know if I'll feel comfortable with this kind of content. But sure, I'll go in anyway for a chance to be seen. Not, a, not advisable, is it? No. It, that's, now, there's one person who I'm thinking of who we recalled, and she's a wonderful actor. And at the point at which she recalled, she knew, and she travelled for it, so she knew that this was involved, and we were really honest from the outset. Yeah. The way Lenny described it was paintings and art and humans. And so in the way that it was handled in the television series is the same way that it was approached at my stage as well, okay. um, which was delicately and elegantly, you know? So she knew and she recalled and she did a lovely job. And then she thought about it and said, via her lovely agent, she said, actually, I'm really sorry, but this is not, and we were like, don't apologize. Do you know what I mean? Like, that's fine. Um, of course it's fine. It's like, apart from having to sort of play this giant character arc over sort of formative years, which is a massive demand, but then obviously there's, there's nudity and scenes of intimate nature and all that. Stuff. So it's a big ask. And if somebody is not comfortable, then I fully appreciate that. But Jimmy, if somebody says, I'll go just to get seen, you're wasting my work day. <laughs> and that's, that's when you'll still meet the Louise that's like, Hmm. <laughs> yes, that one. All is, that list for good. <laughs> <laughs> well, she probably won't remember because I've got a terrible short-term memory. But like, um, but on that day, anyway, I'd be like, and then somebody will remind me six months later. Wasn't that the person? I'd be like, I have no idea. Um, but please don't do that. Yeah, no, because uh, I'll respect you much more if you're just honest at the outset, and that's fine. Yeah. 
And even like we learned, we did some amazing intimacy workshops with Ita O'Brien last week yeah. as well. She was talking about it, even on set, sometimes an actor can have a slight change of feeling about how, you know, what they want to do, how yeah. they feel comfortable in that day. And it's totally understandable as well. Um, so just to contrast then with uh, something like what Richard did, which was a very different approach, because obviously it's, um, um, you know, you're casting, you're casting teenagers, even though adults are playing them to a certain extent, but there's still a lot of younger people involved in that. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about that experience? Mm -hmm. um, so I suppose actually normal people and what Richard did, like normal people, they start at 17, don't they? And in what Richard did, they were in their final year of secondary school. So it kind of same age bracket, really, although I know the uh, Daisy and Paul uh, go on to play 22. Um, so what we did with what Richard did was um, I interviewed for the job and uh, we didn't like self taping. I mean, maybe it was around then, but it wasn't actually around. It might've been a thing that like, you know, if somebody had to send a self tape, they would go into a studio in LA or they would, you know, hire the courtyard or send a tape that way. Um, yeah. But there was a lot more hours in a lot more rooms back then. And so the way we approached it was um, we approached every school in kind of the South County Dublin and North County Dublin who might sort of feel relevant to the story um, that we could that we could find. And, and we probably went to about 12 different schools and the headmasters or headmistresses were very amenable. And, and that was quite an adventure because, you know, you kind of imagine that St. Bernardo's or whatever is going to be like, look like this, but actually it's quite different, you know, and some of them are kind of quite young and a bit hip and others are a bit kind of like, there's one called Columbus, which is in the base of the Wicklow mountains. And it's, like another world you're like wow this how is this even in Dublin so we had a bit of an adventure meeting all these young people and um, and then of course we did we were in the Central Hotel at the time and we did two massive days in Central Hotel as well and I had known of Jack um, because Don Witcherly was teaching him in John Leary I think and Don had said to Derek Mulvey and so so and and Derek had just taken him on and uh, and we kind of knew that he was quite special so he came in and met Lenny and just did a beautiful job. Um, so that's, and then we peppered the world with some, like obviously most of them were actors at the end of the day, to be honest. Uh, well, they were in the main, but then the sort of rugby team that you meet, like I remember meeting each one of those guys in different schools. And, um, and what was interesting about that project as well is that Paddy Gibson was, his character was called Jake and he wasn't, Jake wasn't in the original script, but because we met Paddy along the way and because he does this amazing magic and he was too young for the other characters, they sort of wrote him in and kind of, uh, he was in the movie then in the end. So it was quite the organic process. And, and as I recall, they spent a few months sort of meeting. Oh, actually there was big chemistry reads then as well, like uh, over a weekend. And, um, uh, and then they met a few times for sort of workshops and, um, and the script developed that way. There's a bunch of them hanging out, <coughs> hanging out in the factory or around the time as well. Yeah. Because I, I remember Paddy being, uh, I think he was the youngest member of the Magic Circle. Oh, that's uh, right. Amazing. Yeah. Extraordinary, yeah. And he's all gone on to the OA now and uh, amazing. Um, okay. Um, well, I'm going to jump into because there's so many questions coming in. So let's jump into some of them. Um, uh, diversity in casting, the opportunities for that for inclusive inclusivity approach to, uh, in terms of creating a cast that reflects the real world visually as such. I mean, it's, it's beginning to open up quite a bit at the moment. Um, um, it's, I think it's absolutely essential. I think it's, um, I think it's a requirement of mine and people who do the job that I do to make sure that we work harder so that the, the stories that we tell represent a diverse story, whether that be set in Ireland or set elsewhere. Um, I think it's absolutely paramount. And if it means that we have to, as I say, sort of search a little bit farther or work harder, then that's what we have to do because I think it's essential. Um, there's one here about uh, the best way to get on your radar if we don't have an agent. 
I think you mentioned that. Was it to follow you on social media? And where you do post some jobs sometimes, don't you? Yeah, so there will be jobs posted. But I think the best thing to do is um, just to send an email. Um, uh, just info at louisekiley.com. Send your CV and headshot. And that's what, what, what you do. And that works. Do you know? Um, you'll usually get some, you'll definitely get a response because everybody gets a response, but you usually will sort of give you something to have a look at at that point, usually. Uh, Michal Woods wants to know if there's a, a main difference between when you're casting for film and TV versus maybe commercials or commercial work. Um, I mean, yes, I suppose, because um, in practical terms, a commercial is a much shorter turnaround. Um, they, they have different requirements. Um, uh, I mean, like, obviously, you know, more people can kind of theoretically sort of go and be in commercials because it only takes a day. It's a nice bit of money. And um, the sort of, as I said at the beginning, the kind of the process is the same, really. It's an audition and it's a casting and it's a shoot. Do you know what I mean? Um, so if anybody felt like they wanted to do commercials, I think it's a great experience. And also it's good money, so yeah. Great money. Great money. You can get it, yeah. yeah. Very much about type, isn't it? Know your type. Um, yeah. Right, great advice, watch, watch the adverts during the Late Late Show with the sound off, and you'll see every broad range of, of stereotypical type out there. And it's like, which one are you in all of this? Are you the, are you the, are you the, you know, the, uh, the granny, the, the, mother, yeah. the, the you know, the, 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 what's that terrible phrase um, uh, about the best friend? friend? Are you the one in the friend zone or the regular friend zone? Friend? It's knowing your type of such. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that's kind of like that. I mean, Thursday in my company, uh, she sort of heads up the commercials and, uh, and she's a whiz at them. She knows all that stuff. Yeah. Um, there's a question from a lady who's got a, a four-year-old child and obviously got limited uh, time as such. Uh, always difficult for, uh, for mothers. Mm -hmm. um, what can I do to get myself out there more? She's on movie extras, Fish Pond. I think she's applying for Bow Street, uh, but doesn't even have a showreel yet. I mean, we should talk a little bit about showreels as well. I'll come back to you in a second. But how do, you, how do you get yourself out there when you're starting, maybe? I mean, I think it sounds like you, this lady's been rather proactive anyway, as in the fact that you've got a CV and you're on Fish Pond and you're applying to Bow Street. I mean, that's a lot done. Like I have emails and people contact me and they have far less, you know what I mean? So, um, so just send us your CV and headshot, you know, um, the list of casting directors in Ireland, Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland is very short. Like, yeah it's not hard to get your hands on a list and all you need to do is send them an email in a respectful fashion. And I've said this before, but hi there is not my name. So if you are sending 10 emails, you can send dear whoever, and you can think about who you're writing to. So just personalize it in a short, succinct fashion. And you know, and if you don't have a show, I know we're going to talk about that in a minute, but don't worry. You know what I mean? Generally what we do is we, like we try to find something for you at that time so that we can get you on tape. Um, Tom Neville has that kind of uh, feeds into that as well. The do's and don'ts and approaching the casting director. I presume uh, bribes are out sending, sending, you know, small. You like sending, if you felt like sending a present afterwards, no, I'm joking. Um, no, red, I'm, red or white. <laughs> exactly. Anything, anything. No. Um, uh, no, I mean, yeah, you, it's just about, hi, I want to be an actor, what do I do? And you just go, it's 11 o'clock at night, I've worked all day. Really? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, just, I know, it's just a case of like, use your brain and just be nice and know that it's a business. Yeah. And, um... And if your child wants to be an actor, actually, this is something which I think we should probably talk about more because I get a lot of emails about this. If, if you, so, okay, so let's look at it in two different ways. If you have a child who you would like to register for an agency, then know that we're not one. Um, and equally adults, we're not agents. So we won't, we don't represent you. And that distinction, actually, maybe I should be clearer about that at the beginning. 
And if you if you feel like your child has an interest, then enroll them in a drama school uh, with with an agency attached. But what I think people forget sometimes when it comes to young people and even, you know, people who want to be in commercials and stuff like that, acting is a skill. And you don't have to be the most talented person in the world, but you certainly have to kind of have an, have an interest. It's like, just because your child looks like Ronaldo doesn't mean that they can play football. Do you know what I mean? So get him in there. I mean, there's nothing wrong with youth theatre and, and drama schools anyway. And equally, courses are brilliant. Get into Bow Street, learn stuff. Like work on that craft. Do you know what I mean? And then you'll know if it's something that you you want to continue with. And hopefully at some point somebody will tell you to uh, to address your emails correctly. <laughs> That's all I need. And, and keep them short. The giant, really long emails. No, yeah. no time to read. I, I no, I I won't. But I will respond to you. Like as in, you know, I I will. I mean, I'll scan them. But I, you know, but I will. I will respond. But I just needed to kind of just be nice. Yeah. Uh, we have a bunch of people uh, tuning in, if that's the right word, from England. Uh, Irish actors who studied abroad uh, and are curious to know about should they get an Irish agent as well as a UK agent? or Because they don't, sometimes they don't share, do they? Uh, no, I don't think so. Sometimes they don't share. I'm not entirely privy to all of that information. Sometimes you might sort of hear it. But, um, I mean, the short answer is... You don't have to have an Irish agent if you've got a UK agent. And the longer answer is, if you want both, you should get both. Do you know what I mean? As in, like, if you're in touch with us, if you live in England and you are represented by Bloomfields or Curtis Brown, you know, whoever over there, the, like, the likelihood is that we'll probably know who you are um, because it's our job to know Irish people represented in varying parts of the world. If we don't know you, then just send us an email and let us know that you're represented by Jonathan Aaron in London. And that's absolutely fine. So it's kind of the same thing, isn't it? And then if you do sign with an Irish agent and we live in Ireland and obviously that this is our main territory. So then of course, what we'll do is we'll go via your Irish agent as our per first port of, port of call. But I honestly don't mind wherever we have to go to find you. But just get in touch. Um, I know auditioning is difficult for a lot of actors because um, some of them, they're like, I need more information. I need to delve into the character. I can't just turn up with 48 hours notice. In fact, actually, I remember Ben Rischel auditioned for me before he was, he was known. He came in, but he wouldn't, he wouldn't read. He, mm. he couldn't, I, don't, I couldn't possibly give you a performance without having spent a couple of weeks on this, which is very hard to assess. Mm. Um, and obviously, um, I should have listened to him and given him the chance. <laughs> but uh, but our, a lot of actors are introverts as well. There's mm -hmm. the cliche is they're all extrovert. They're not. So someone wants to know if I'm if I'm naturally introverted, mm -hmm. I, how do I find a way to maybe approach a casting director at a festival to introduce myself or in a you know or I don't want to come across as rude in an audition if I'm a little bit shy or whatever. Uh, I think it's okay to be introverted. Is it? Absolutely, 100%. Yeah. Like, I mean, I think the kind of approaching me in a bar or a festival club is far less interesting to me than, you know, sending me an email in a work hour. Do you know what I mean? And sending me a little link to something which you've read or something you've done. Um, like, I will work with you based on the work. If you're a shy human, then that's your prerogative. That's, you know... I'm shy, as in I'm sitting here chatting away, blah, blah, blah. But like, I have a very large private side to me, which shall remain so. And like, I'm, if I was in the festival club in Galway and there was a massive American producer who I knew was making a big, huge movie over here, I would be uncomfortable walking over to that producer, like in a massive way. And I'm, I think it would, I don't think I would do that. Do you know what I mean? I think I would probably sort of say no and maybe ask my agent to get in touch or, you know, do it that way. I think an email is perfectly reasonable. And if you are nervous or if you are shy in an audition, then that's just human stuff. And I can feel that. But your work speaks for itself. Where is the line uh, between an actor who, you know, hears something's being cast and they're in their head? I am the only person who could play this and I have to get it through to Louise that I am the best one. That, that 
enthusiasm, that, uh, that pushiness, that, uh, and you do hear these anecdotal stories of someone who went off and, and shot something else or whatever to, to win the part. Where's the line between that and then just being a head wrecking uh, nutbag? Well, I think the days of head wrecking have slightly finished, like ended or something. Do you know what I mean? I think people are more self aware nowadays. Yeah. There is, like, when we were casting normal people, the book was really very famous around the world and had done very, very well and is a beautifully written book. So people felt very strongly about Marianne and Connell. So if somebody sent me an enthusiastic and generous and effusive email about the source material, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, if they elect to record something, uh, I mean, I suppose it depends what it is. Um, generally, I'm kind of open-minded enough and I try to remember that this is a human person and they've gone to this, you know, this length and, and, and at no point would I sort of dismiss somebody's work. That said, if you have emailed me and I have responded and... I mean, let's be honest, like more often than not, you probably will get a self tape if you are in the right sort of zone. Like if you, if you're 32 and the character is written as, as 20 and you believe you can play 16 to 35, that is your prerogative. But at the end of the day, my friend, <laughs> do you know what I mean? If somebody is written as 20, then like there's going to have to be a little zone around that age, probably. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, so if we have, a said not on this occasion or B sent you a self tape and we've received it and we've been polite around it. That's probably enough. Do you know what I mean? I don't then need to kind of hear from you sort of every two weeks, you know, I think contacting people via email in a pleasant fashion every few months or like twice a year is probably enough, you know? Um, and yeah, just, yeah, just That's kind a of point as well. It's like have a reason to contact. Yeah. I mean, I've got a show coming up or I'm in this movie yeah. to check out or yeah. Yeah. That's always good, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Or um, you know, or I shot these scenes in Bow Street or I um made a short film or you know, and like there's always a little link that you can put on there. Um I did some work at home with my partner who's also an actor, or do you know what I mean? Like there's we can be because everybody nowadays has a home studio and a ring light, like, you know, there is far more sort of, people have carte blanche to go and make stuff themselves, don't they? And I'm not suggesting that, you know, everybody has to go and make a whole beautiful piece of installation art. But what I mean is that you can record a little scene and you can share that. And if you are going to record a scene, choose something which is not really famous from something else. So you're not kind of reading Meryl Streep's lines. Do you know what I mean? Um, but that you are something which is simple enough and short enough and neat enough that I will go, oh, wow, that's good. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, one or two quick ones on self-taping. Tony Doyle wants to know how creative can you get as long as the shot is still on you. Um, and it's like a one shot, clearing the frame is not distracting. How far can you push the boat out on that? That's a really good question. Um, and I think, again, there's an absolute fine line, right? Okay, so if you're in a car, if it's written in a car, we get a lot of cars, right? Which is fine because people know where to angle it and, you know, and you don't really mind that. If it's in a bed, I'd really rather not see your bed. There's like, I'm in the nightdress and I'm in my bed and it's just a bit, you know, there's a, there's a way around the bed, which I don't think we need. If you are an aspiring filmmaker and enjoy darkness with what looks like a floaty head in the middle of it, I would prefer not that because it's too self-aware or it's too what might be deemed pretentious. Do you know what I mean? So avoid those crazy vignettes where it's really dramatic lighting and yeah. just yeah. Yeah, like <coughs> like <coughs> just black and all you can see is their head. Do you yeah. know what I mean? <clears throat> it's Bohemian I, Rhapsody video. 
Yeah, exactly. Imagine two of them, four of them. Um, no, it's just, and it's so effortful that it kind of, you know, it takes me out and it makes, you know, it makes me kind of think that the person's like, wow, look at my beautiful self tape. And, and yes, it is probably a beautiful self tape, but I just need a fairly simple version of that, please. It can be beautifully lit and it can have a sort of a, a brick wall in the background instead of a plain wall, or it can have like this wall without all of this jazziness or, you know, but, but plain is better. And even in the car, yeah. you don't have to be in the car. Do you know what I mean? Um, don't but, make a short movie, basically. No, you don't. In fact, I would prefer if you didn't. But if you do, just as simple as you can. But that's not going to get you the part. It's the performance, ultimately. Yes. Um, there's a few more on self tapes, and and uh, there's a few people asking about. I can't decide between the third take or the forty seventh take, and I don't. What should I do? And I don't have a director to tell me. Can they send two? Can they send two versions? Yeah. I mean, absolutely. Send two, not six. Just two is fine. Two is fine. Yeah. Uh, okay, this is an interesting thing. Maybe it's also about, uh, and I think it's something we have to look at as well, about uh, self-care, looking after yourself, where uh, moving on from an audition that you've really heavily emotionally invested in, uh, mm -hmm. spending a lot of time digging deep into that character, and then, you know, you put it all out there, and then, just silent sometimes for a while afterwards. It's, I guess it's kind of like about maybe not taking the job home with you or. That's very hard. And I know, I mean, look, I know, I know it's hard. Um, sometimes it takes ages and sometimes you don't hear and, um, and that is very hard. Um, yeah. I mean, how can I, how can I give advice when I remember that feeling so much? It's very hard. Um, if I were to try to give advice about that, I suppose it's like a lightning in a bottle, or that's the wrong expression, but basically just to try to kind of make it, do it, and then close it. And then when and if it comes back, then we do it in its, like, you know, yeah. your performance exists in this piece and and in order for yourself yeah to feel okay you know you've got to do the things that make you feel okay in the world because it's a hard job and yeah. i fully aware of that um allowing it to exist really just between action and cut you know it's not your yeah. life it's just that character as such it's challenging yeah it is um, uh, what happens if someone sends you their self tape and then they haven't slept all night thinking they've sent the wrong tape and they send another one in the morning? That's fine. fine. Just don't do it all the time. And you know what? Actually, there are a few people who I can literally set my watch to it. I go and I see them in the studio and they and we go and we don't leave. We don't let you leave until we know we've got a really good one. So like it's always fine. So then they leave and about an hour and a half later, they send me an email and go, oh my God, that was the worst I've ever done. So I've self-taped as well. And you go, well, that's fine if it's the worst tape you've ever done once. But if it's the worst tape you've ever done six times and it happens every single time, you need to hear me and say, you've done a fine job, you're grand. Do you know what I mean? That's another thing about getting feedback on self-tapes and if, when you didn't get the audition, it's like that, why? I mean, I guess sometimes that really goes through the agent. If you have an agent, maybe the agent wants to know, is there something they did or whatever? Mm -hmm. But if you're self-represented, and I know you see an awful lot of people who are self-represented, who are in the, the vacuum or whatever, I guess it must be hard to give every person feedback. Mm. It is. It takes a long time because if somebody does ask for feedback, I will go back and watch it and I will take my time and think about it. So it does take a lot of time. But I, but I respect the question. Do you know what I mean? So... Uh, the general answer is that it's, ex it's what we were talking about a while ago it's suitability and it's chemistry and it's uh, it's just that somebody else is more suited now if your accent is bad <laughs> I will say your accent needs work and that is a problem like they're like when we are doing those North American or English, and I know I've banged on about this, so I won't continue for a huge amount of time, but if, if I get 60 tapes in, 20 of the accents will be bad. And that will be just like, that, that is a fast whip through, do you know? And if somebody asks me, then at least I can say, well, you know, your accent needs work. 
Yeah. And then they can say behind their computer, no, it doesn't. <laughs> yeah. yeah. As they wait to hear about another. Fine. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. But beyond that, it's hard. It's very hard. It's also, I remember talking to the uh, casting director, Marjorie Simkin, who I think was, you know, huge American. Uh, yeah, it's is. What do you do when you've got someone in the room and in the back of your mind, well, they mightn't even be in the room, but you're thinking to myself, don't quit the day job. Uh, and, she, and her attitude was, you can never, ever, ever tell an actor that because you never know when the part might suddenly, 50 years later, be suitable as such. Yeah. So, uh, it, so the question I think came in from someone, how can you tell if an actor has potential or doesn't? I mean, can you tell that? I mean, everyone has potential. Like, yeah. everyone, can, everyone can do something. Like, when somebody does your course, like, everybody that comes in, goes in one way and comes out having learnt and improved and created and made. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So in that in that timeline their potential they have used their potential and they've created something haven't they so i think it comes back to self-doubt maybe sometimes if you're not breaking through it's just that part hasn't come along yet or yeah um for sure and and again i would say i'm not like in the same way as like don't waste my time if you don't want the part like I'm not wasting my time sitting at home at seven or eight in the evening every night watching the same person tape for four projects unless I actually think they're any good. So if you are receiving repeated self-tapes from us, which of course is entirely your decision whether you want to engage with or not, and I fully respect if you don't, but the fact is if we're sending you the self-tapes, it's because you're good. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Now, I know that we can't guarantee anything, um, but that is... That is the life of an actor. It's very hard, you know. Um, luckily, in this day and age, I know loads of actors who are friends of mine who create lo who who create themselves. I mean, my goodness, like who create theatre and who um, put monologues on the internet and make good stuff, you know, right? Yeah. Don't wait for that role to come in. Just create their own piece themselves. For sure. Look We've at seen there's a huge I'm demand. Sure. I don't. I don't know if you're aware, but there's like uh, Screen Ireland launched this actors creator series mm -hmm. uh, that I've seen, and that and the hundreds of applications, amazing, amazing talent. Amazing, yeah. and like if you think about like Emmett, um, Emmett and Ian, who started doing Dublin Old School on a stage with no props and an amazing show, and then Claire, and then obviously it was a, a movie, and then Claire Dunn, who wrote her oh, film. Yeah. Pardon me. Herself herself yes exactly and it is a really great film and she is amazing in it so good for her uh, if an actor how much is their training taken into consideration so for example if someone's background is either shakespeare or musical theater will they be brought in for something not in that world or that field absolutely 100 percent. where particularly um i mean shakespeare as far as i'm concerned everybody's basis is shakespeare but musical theater people who work in musical theater have a fear and it's a very common question that I get from people in musical theatre. They feel that they sort of don't get the, that people will look and go, oh musicals, musicals, oh therefore we won't. To be honest, again, I don't mind, you know. Yeah, same stuff. Um, showreels, let's just, we might wrap up with showreels. Um, tips. I could, sure. talk for, I could talk for hours about yeah. Yeah, yeah. Here here. This is your area. Uh, well, I, I'm not a fan of the music video at the start. Montage is out. Let's get rid of the montage. Yeah. It's real 90s as well. Yeah. Um, so let's keep it short. Let's keep it, you know, all the good stuff. Um, if you are a martial arts king, then or queen then absolutely put that little fight sequence in because we have such a massive requirement for that stuff these days um if you are a student and these are pieces of, from student pieces that's absolutely fine the quality tends to be amazing these days just keep it short um that's it yeah just keep it short just like short and good it's literally you just want to see them acting so it's like three 40 second clips of even self tapes is totally fine isn't it 
Yeah. It doesn't have to be. I mean, you know, self-tapes is a funny thing because if, no, maybe self-tapes when the prod, when the product, when the movie, when the production has like, is already out or something, but, but sharing, like if, if somebody reads for Frank or Maureen, a project like Valhalla, which I'm not privy to, and I'm quite sure the sides are watermarked. So I don't think we should be sharing the self-tapes until at a little bit of a later date. Do you know what I mean? That's really important actually for us because we watermark everything and like people say, is it okay if I, oh, two things. Actually, this is a good point, I think, for the actors. If it says on your, on your watermark sides, um, you know, and it says on it, these are not for sharing on the email, blah, 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 then that's really important. So if you're reading with your friend and you send me a self-tape and say, I was reading with my friend who was invited to tape, here's my tape. That kind of irritates me a little bit because first of all, you weren't invited. Second of all, those sides weren't for you. And third of all, just ask. Yeah, that's what I mean about taking too much initiative and being maybe possibly a little chance yes. in their arm a bit. Yes, just a, a, a request. Because as soon as I see that, I kind of go, oh, and then they sort of go, oh, sorry, sorry. And you go, yeah, but you know, just a little bit of thought, you know? Um, should non-national uh, people, foreign actors living in Ireland try to learn an Irish accent? No, absolutely not. You know what? Your accent is your accent and it, your accent is lovely and just use that. Yeah. Uh, and you go to theatre, don't you? I mean, you guys mm -hmm. go and see shows. You, it's not like you only cast people from, from no. movies or TV shows that you've seen. Yeah, I love the theatre. And, um, and luckily, there's, you know, there are sort of five of us, so we split it up as much as we can. Yeah. That's great gang. Uh, I think we covered almost all of them. I think some of them have been repeated a few times or similar versions of it. Uh, there's a few here that I should say as well, Louise, it's worth mentioning that there's some of them aren't questions. They're just saying thank you for, um, oh. for replying, literally. It's so nice to get for the people to get a reply that they're very grateful that you take the time to reply to them. So many people are saying what an amazing job you guys all did on normal people. They can't imagine. I think it's the ultimate compliment. They can't imagine any other actor in the role. Yeah. Uh, um, except unless you've auditioned for it, in which case you probably imagine yourself in that role. <laughs> exactly. We have had a couple of people, which is really kind, send emails going, I auditioned for it and I still think. And so that's sound. Do you know what I mean? Gonna, you're not going to keep everyone happy, obviously. You know what I mean? No, no. But it's nice to be generous like that. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, no, that's very kind. To be honest, um, I've got a whole sort of Irish pride about normal people. I just think the fact that it's an Irish story made by an Irish production team and has translated, you know, to the world or whatever has moved, like people have fallen in love with it around the world. I just think that's a real proud moment for us. So yeah, so go Ireland. It really is a fly the flag in this moment. Mm -hmm. uh, it's amazing writing, directing, casting all across the board. Uh, for those people who are attending, thank you for taking the time to join in. Check out our website, bowstreet.ie forward slash summer series. You'll see more webinars coming up. Uh, we have on diversity, uh, self-taping, a whole variety of stuff there. Uh, Louise, thank you so much for taking the time to do this. Really appreciate it. It's a pleasure. Thank you for having me and thank you for tuning in. Not at all. Amanda. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye. Okay, guys. Bye. <laughs>